Hello everyone, welcome to Hawkeye Traders. My name is Randy Lindsay, host of today's live interactive session. I'm here to educate and inform you on the proper use of Hawkeye tools on the live edge of the market. I'm here to help you to set up your tools, to give you background and demonstration of how the tools work, how to apply the tools to your charts, and how to use them in live trade examples. If you have any questions or comments over on the right hand side, your go-to webinar control panel is a questions pane please enter your question or comments there i'll be more than glad to get to them in the order that they're received if i don't get to them for some reason then it's not because i'm ignoring you it's, i just sometimes overlook questions so please uh, feel free to repeat your question until i can answer them if i cannot answer them then i'll say so and i'll make sure and get your email address so that i can reply back to you I want to make sure everyone here knows that we are here for educational purposes only. Hawkeye Traders is not an investment advisory service. We are not registered trading advisors. We're not broker dealers, so we cannot tell you whether to buy or to sell any securities or currencies. You should make those decisions for yourself. Um, make sure that you consult a competent financial advisor before investing money in any of these markets. And make sure that you use common sense whenever you're trading. Make sure that you understand that there is a large potential for reward in trading any of the futures, stocks, forex, or options markets, but there's also a large potential for risk. You must be aware of the risks involved and be willing to accept them in order to invest in any of these markets. Make sure that you don't trade with money you can't afford to lose and never, ever, ever trade in a live trading account until you have first proven you can consistently and profitably trade in a simulated account with simulated funds to prove your, you can actually trade on the platform and the plan that you're using. Past performance is not in necessarily indicative of future results, so make sure that you do due diligence before you start investing your money in any market. I'm displaying the NinjaTrader platform. I'm on NinjaTrader 7 right here. If there are any questions or comments with regards to the setup, this is a futures uh, workspace that I'm showing. I've got several others. I've got a stock portfolio set up. I have Forex set up. I have a volume traders package only set up. So if you're uh, if you're here and you have just got started with Hawkeye and the volume starter package, I've got that set up and on the go, ready to go for you. Just let me know if you have any uh, questions with regards to that. I'll be more than glad to do a market analysis for you. So if there's any specific stock uh, future uh, at commodity or forex uh, uh, instrument that you want me to do some uh, detailed analysis on from the Hawkeye perspective I'll be more than glad to do that as well right now we are watching the markets as they just opened the US session uh, the uh, equity session just opened three about three minutes ago and we're watching the crude oil um, it's looking looking like it's had a pretty strong down move if you're looking at the 60 minute move it has a pretty strong down move with some corrections back up to prior resistance so it broke through and created a nice level of supply when price gets back up to that supply it sell usually sells right back off again that's exactly what we're doing we can see on the longer term that we do have a floor demand region that's sitting here right about 56 56 so that's what we're looking for as a target but we can see there is floor sitting right around in this area you know so if we're looking at that right there you can see we've broken the prior lows and it looks like it's on its way back down but we're starting to see accumulation coming on volume we have a nice extension low with a pivot so that tells me that there is a very good probability that there could be a correction prior to any advance to go down so I'm looking for that correction to play out prior to that but the correction has a channel okay so we do we are in a nice lower high and lower low structure so um, we're just we're just watching for that so if I were to um, look at this and play this out then if I were to pull up the tools and draw me a nice uh, what ray then you can connect the dots here and see um, I'll pull that down just a little bit right there then you can you got a nice channel to look for on the top side 
So price can retrace back up to here, if not even to the uh, the zone here before it continues back down. Um, it might even go, just go right up to the trend dots. But the trend dots are there to give you a relative uh, measure of bullishness or bearishness. It gives you a, a kind of a fair value of where the general trend of the market is. So right now we are in a downtrend and looking for lower side targets. Well, good morning, everyone. I see lots of uh, good mornings and hellos. Nahid, Sven, Thomas, TJ, Jim. Excellent to see you. Great to, to have everyone in the room this morning. Uh, Philip wants to know, um, is this congestion entrance or are we in congestion right now? Uh, on the crude oil, if you're looking at the uh, three minute, looking at the three, six and 12 minute, we can see that right now the three minute is currently in congestion. We, you can see that the trend dots are going sideways. The close have has closed down below the trend dot. So that's congestion entrance. Now let's look back to see prior to that where we were. Um, at this point, we've got uh, trend. You can see a pivot down here is the uh, close above. So this is congestion entrance. We've got a low. There's our pivot high. Here's the break. So this is considered a trend run. We have a close below with trend dots going down or slightly sideways. So this becomes another congestion entrance. So here's your high and your low channel. Okay, pull that up just to see this. Right there. All right, so there is the break of that congestion channel high, but then it just goes right back into a low. So this is just channeling. We're, we're congested. You can see here on the six minute, we are um, congested. And then here we on the uh, 12 minute, okay, da strong downtrend, but you can see that we have closed in and are in congestion. So right now this has closed back out and is coming right back in. So this is congestion entrance. And uh, this becomes our channel high, and we're waiting for the three to five price bars to give us either a pivot or a phantom to define our low for this range right here. So yes, so it's just been bouncing in and out of congestion. No real um, signals uh, uh, to go by. This was a, a nice open signal about 15 minutes prior to the, the, the open of the market. But it was a very small price bar. This is a really nice signal, but the signal came on this bar, and that bar really was a weak, a weak bar for such a, a good signal. Volume was relatively low coming into that, and we're very much inside a, a range. So that was a weak, a weak signal long. If we were looking at that, Philip. Hi, Ivana. You're welcome. I hope that was what you were looking for, as far as uh, analysis. Looking at the fat boy, I can see that the crude oil has uh, peaked and is starting to, to show a trend of weakness. Um, the, the Dow rallied up earlier this morning, but now has come back down and we're, we're starting to see it right at fair value. NASDAQ had a nice trend of weakness that has rallied back very quickly at the open. The S&P is following it. The mid caps, not quite yet. They're starting to round out, but they are all decorrelated at the moment. And I'm waiting for that decorrelation to consolidate before I look at t trying to take any trades on this market. So let's look at that NASDAQ. NASDAQ has been an excellent uh, trade recently. It's been very volatile and it's been all over the place, which is, uh, provides for some excellent trading opportunities. Uh, those uh, really fast trades come in and go, but uh, right now you can see the, uh, a lot of strength is building in that NASDAQ, which we expected and we saw from the fat boy. The other markets aren't doing quite as strong, but the NASDAQ has gotten spanked recently, and we're just watching the lows coming back. And so it's trying to bounce back and get back to some prior highs it had gotten to uh, before. Uh, let me switch over to TradeStation real quick. Uh, it's a couple of things I want to very quickly show. Uh, you can see uh, on the longer term, okay, you can see the um, the Dow 
has made uh, the, probably the most impressive gains. If you look at the longer term fat boy, the longer term fat boy gives you a pretty good picture of all of the markets that we're looking at here. You can see that the S&P and the Dow are the two strongest of the futures, the minis, but the Dow has continued into, uh, it stretched its arms just a little bit. It's made a, a bigger push than any of the other instruments, while the NASDAQ has been a complete uh, weak uh, move. So if we were to take and compare that now to the longer term NASDAQ play, you can see that it is not stretching its wings at all. However, it had a nice run up and then came off pretty hard. So with the uh, the bull run of, of tech stocks from November, um, a lot of profit taking is coming in right now. And what we're seeing on the short term is just simply a, a bounce back from prior um, sell offs. Okay, so watch for that. You've got a lot of selling pressure on the NASDAQ right now. The S&P 500, again, it's the second best performing one, but it's starting, like the YM, it's starting to come off, showing a little bit of topping here. You've got a, a, a nice blow off and a huge amount of volume here at the top after an exponential run. So that's a clear sign that potentially this has been uh, an exhaustion run and the this potentially could be the high but we don't know that and we can never call the high but looking at the volume extreme amount of volume and the volatility that has come in to these markets this looks like a, a good indication that this could be looking at the high of the year um, most almost definitely the, the high of this particular uh, run maybe not the high of the the entire uh, bull run that started back in uh, 2008 on 2009 but um, s still a very um, a very strong finish if you're looking at the monthly the monthly is still just in par basically average volume for the the entire run and looking at the peaks uh, looks like it's actually trailing down slightly but still very clearly bullish uh, for the long term but shorter term, we've seen this before. You know, you've seen weakness, you've seen price come up and weakness coming in. You've seen price come up, you've seen this uh, this type of uh, price pattern before, but you really haven't seen this on a daily chart with so much volume. You have two very high volume charts, day uh, bars in a row uh, with some exponential price. So that's a a very good sign that this could be uh, looking at uh, a top. I'm not calling it. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying what what the charts are trying to tell me are here and and what we're looking for long term. So we've had uh, three days of pullback. So today is a very good possibility of uh, some some gains. Some people shorting off and then uh, trying to get back in at prior prices prior to this this blow off. So there's another chance, but uh, watch for this to come back up. If we do not see at least a 50% retracement on this re on this correction, um, then then we're going to see a continuation. If we break that and start continue back up, watch for a double top and the potential for a head and shoulders. But uh, there's a lot of a lot still building right there. The YM is essentially the same picture. Here we've got a whole lot of volume, but it is not buying volume. You can see this is neutral volume, which means there's a lot of sellers in there as well, keeping that from being uh, green. So that's an interesting picture to note. Well, thank you, Philip. I appreciate that. Marcel, good morning. The bearish Aussie yen from yesterday was a 66 pip profit. Oh, <laughs> paid for all of your shopping spree. <laughs> well, good job. <laughs> good for you. Aussie yen. Let me pull that up for you real quick then. 
from yesterday. I know we were talking about that yesterday in our uh, in our Tomahawk class. Mm, that was a nice move. Look at that. Australian was extremely overbought. The yen was was definitely oversold. So that that's a good move. Good for you, Marcel. Can we look at the euro, US dollar, and the euro New Zealand? Okay, right now, if you're looking at the 15, 30, 45, this is a five minute, so this is a 15 minute fat man. Let me look at the 15 minute, so that's a 45 minute. Um, I was watching this earlier, but I was watching the pound Canadian for a potential reversal. There's a really nice trend down on that but i'm watching for the reversal trade uh with strength coming back in potential weakness so that's why i was watching earlier but the euro us dollar euro has come off of a trend of weakness and it's starting to flatten a little bit the us dollar has been in a fair value range but it's starting to show some strength so potentially if we see this continue with that then we're looking for a continuation short I'm looking at a weak euro with a potentially strong dollar for so at the moment. So if we look at a 15 minute, you can see there is some dollar strength coming in and the euro is looks like it's kind of flattening out, but it's kind of in a fair market range. It has come back in, rallied down and come back up. So this is a potential hook pattern that if it starts to roll back over, you could see a nice trend of weakness out of that so that's what i'm looking for on the euro us dollar on the uh, shorter term picture new zealand uh the euro again uh same analysis but you're seeing strength coming in that new zealand um 50 that was a 15 already so let's look at the uh, 45. the euro and the new zealand on the longer term are trending in the same direction so um, why I'm watching that and I'm ex I wouldn't expect a lot of move out of that other than if the euro continues to weaken that shorter term strength in the New Zealand might be positive so you'd look for a, another downturn in that euro New Zealand pair I'm not sure what the longer term so let's look at a 60 and uh, let's look at a 120 yeah, they're longer term. I'm not seeing a lot out of the Euro New Zealand uh, pair, so I'm not quite sure about that one. However, um, if you're looking at the Euro US dollar, then longer term, this looks like a nice pattern for a continuous continuation short for the Euro US dollar. In my humble opinion. Thomas, what is the input to see the daily fat boy? All right, real quickly. Um, the daily fat boy, I'm just using simple daily charts. And uh, the symbols that I load for these right here, I'll show you a list of those real quick. I'm looking at the S&P, the NASDAQ, gold, YM, Russell, and the crude oil. The Russell is the purple one there. So this is the Dow Jones, the light blue. The S&P is red. Russell is purple. Gold is yellow. Crude oil is white. And NASDAQ is green. So it gives us the ability to load six different uh, currencies or six different uh, symbols into the list. And then from that, um, I can look at the whatever time frame and all of these are set on daily so I'm looking at all the relative strength mappings of each of these as opposed to each other uh, on a longer term time frame so you this works on any time frame I just happen to like this on my longer term charts to see what the relative correlation and the strength of each of the components are helps me to, to be able to see that Sure. So you're looking uh, longer term, Marcel?
possibly like a quarter day, half day setup, or are you looking more at a like a um, 15, 30, 60 minute time frame? A daily, okay, good. Well, here is a 367.20 daily. So let's look at that uh, Euro US dollar. Euro US dollar, looking at it being a short, and we were looking at for some bearish trend, and you want to be able to hold on bearishness. So looking at the 360, which is a quarter day setup, and looking at the overall daily, from a 14, 40 minute perspective, I can get the uh, full magnitude of the volume bars. If I go to a, a daily chart, then all of the volume bars flatten out. So I don't get actual volume data on daily bars or greater. So that's what I'm looking at there. Uh, but as far as uh, uh, looking at the uh, the daily setup, then you can see that we are um, a very bullish topped. You can see that uh, we've been banging our head up against that, but we're, we're kind of right into a stuck range right here. Um, it's a uh, downside for initially we're looking at a 77.59 or even a 67.23 uh, initially um, but we, we need to be able to get back down and start retesting this 58.26 before we're going to be seeing any real moving and that might take a little bit of time The uh, 360 minute, uh, this is the 720 minute fat man is showing that we are still on a trend of weakness for the euro and a potential hook on the dollar. So that also is in line with our continued longer term weakness and the daily is still in a trend of weakness as well. So a trend of strength on the dollar, trend of weakness. So longer term perspective is still good. The 360, if we get this close below the stop, this will generate a the first red trend dot. So red trend dot volume is already red, heat map is already red. Uh, so we've got we've got the initiation initial input for a short building here. However, the 720 is still in a long trend, and the heat map is still bright green. Even though the volume has turned, we're still we still need to see that heat maps start to darken just a bit if you're looking for confirmed conservative entries if you're looking for more aggressive entries then just dial the time down into a 60 minute 120 240 or maybe even a 60 180 360 so that way you get nice even increments leading up to a 360. so a 60 minute a 180 and then a 360 would give you a really nice setup going into this and then if you see that change in turn this will eventually follow suit but yes this does go in line and uh, correlates um, our analysis for a longer term short euro us dollar now euro new zealand again uh, that was another story it um, it looks bearish but it's weak it's weak by comparison um, if you're looking at the fat man analysis, so the Euro New Zealand here, the Euro about fair value, uh, the New Zealand about fair value. So they're all in this range, but the, the Euro is definitely trending down while the New Zealand is flat here. You do see a nice setup like we saw with the dollar. Um, the New Zealand has come down to fair value and has hooked back up on a trend of strength. So that looks nice for a continued trend of weakness in the euro. So this looks nice on a longer term perspective. Uh, this chart doesn't look as good except for the weakness of the euro. So um, the 360 has given an initial trend dot short, but the second time frame is not confirming it yet because it's still in a long trend. So you can't, can't take the trade from a conservative perspective and it might need to wait until it validates a break of this uh, 1.707 zone before you can really confirm that and if it does then yes we would be looking for a 166 16776 as a downside target so a break of that 70775 we're looking for a 6776 target to the downside. So yeah, 
it does look more um it does look better to the downside but right now with the shorter term time frame so close um, this is what I would expect to see for quite a while. It's just this type of a range bound trading activity on the Euro New Zealand. So, yeah, that's right. So if you go, if you go into the times, then if you do hit, then go for a, like a 60 minute here, you can do a 180. and then a 360 then you can use that to help you to see the 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 uh, timing and to get those uh, set up so this was the uh, euro US dollar yeah so for the shorter time frame that does uh, look really nice for a continuation short we are just starting to break those lows, but you can see that the one, two, and three time frames, you're already in a downtrend on the 60 minutes. You are already in a downtrend here on the 180. You're just starting a downtrend on the 360. So, boom, that looks pretty nice. Thomas, um, how do you see the daily time frame and not an intraday time frame? Put it on a daily chart. That's all. This uh, fat boy, see, it's on a daily chart. So I load, I load the fat boy indicator on a daily chart. Doesn't matter what indicator you use for that just load it on a daily chart and enable it for these symbols that I had shown you it shows the ES but if you format the symbol list then you can see I've got the same symbol list just change it to a daily chart so the quick way to do it is to go to one of your other charts that has trade station the fat boy on it right click on the chart and copy the window that will make a copy of that fat boy Go over to your longer term charts, right click anywhere and select paste window. Here I've got a three minute. This is a one minute, but I can then change that to a daily either by selecting my time interval and I can select that as daily or I can just simply type in daily. Change that to a daily chart. Now I have all of my indicators that I have listed there set up for daily. Just that, that, just that easy. Yeah. I think this one's the mid cap. It's not the uh, the Russell. So if I were to look at the data stream. Yeah, see, I've got the mid cap in there and not the uh, Russell. So they're a little bit different, but. Yeah, copy and paste makes it very easy. And you are very welcome. All right, we're coming up on 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock, there's usually news that are out. Uh, I like to go to the Forex factory as a news source to see what uh, we have, have up to the day. So always be aware of the news that's out and uh, what to look for. Uh, so today at 10 o'clock, we do have the Bank of Canada giving their uh, rate statements and their overnight rates. So watch for the Canadian dollar to start moving. I was always already watching for the Canadian dollar against the pound the pound is showing some trend of strength against that weakening Canadian dollar so watch for that and also watch the uh, other pairs that trade against the Canadian dollar uh, that looks like the only thing that we're watching coming out here and of course always at 1030 we've got crude oil inventories unless we've got um, other things going on so at 1030 is the report for crude oils they're expecting a 3.2 million draw previously had 3.4 million so declining um, 
stockpiles implies rising prices. So that's a if this if this is met, then uh, that still shows the expectations are in line. But uh, if there's a surprise, then we need to uh, be ready for that. Gold longer term picture, okay. Gold has broken its uh, short channel that we were watching here. You can see the uh, Hawkeye pivots have a pivot extension showing that the price of gold has broken through that pivot extension and we have confirmed a downtrend with a red trend dot. We also have confirmed two volume roadkill uh, dots as well. This, this does confirm that this is a confirmed signal down with an entry signal on the daily. The weekly, you have red volume, and the monthly, you do not have a red volume. But if you're looking at the daily, three day, weekly, or two day, let me see what my roadkill is here. I always bounce between two and three days. It's currently a three day setup. So we're looking at three day versus weekly settings for the roadkill. And this is a weekly set up here and my heat map is also on a three-day set so my heat map ht is set for for that so this is a confirmed daily three-day weekly entry signal for gold um, i would look for this gold to retest this downtrend right here so the downside target on that on the weekly chart would give us about a 123.90 to the downside. And that still would be a, in, an uptrend. It would not be enough to break the downtrend. But if we close below that Hawkeye stop, and that Hawkeye stop is a 1239.60, if we close below that, then this will also confirm a downtrend. And if that downtrend is confirmed, then that, that will break the uh, the trend that was established because this was a very strong move for gold a uh, very strong case for gold to build but um, if gold is going to continue to move up we need to see uh, a lot more strength out of this um, this market here so i do have for some reason i do have a, a floor support drawn in here at 6280 which we have not broken yet Historically, I'm, I looked back and I saw that either this has been obeyed and it looks like a strong level of support. So we're going to have to see quite a bit of volume push through. We're starting to get that, which it looks good, but we need to see if price can actually do that. So on the longer term, yeah, that looks good. Tick charts, yep, absolutely. But that's uh, this pretty much gives you a, a, an, an intraday trend trade setup because you're generally trading either three to five, even seven minute time frame bars is the time frames that you trade. So you can see this is about a two and a half minute. This is about a five minute bar, about a 12 minute. So you're still looking at about a three, yeah, three, six, 12 is what I trade a lot of times. And so that gives you a pretty good estimate of what those time frames are and what they're looking at right now. This is currently 60 minute. That's a little too fast. I think it should be more like a 15 to 20 minute. In this case, uh, three times five is 15. Uh, so probably a 15 would be a little bit fair estimate of where the market is right now. You're welcome, Sven, and it's good to see you as always.
so looking uh, looking at uh, most of the uh, the dollar pairs are very very weak which implies a strong US dollar so we can see a trend of strength in the US dollar so um, looking at the breakdown you can see that most of the pairs even on a five minute are showing nice trends of weakness against that strong US dollar And likewise, uh, those that the dollar is primary, they are all green. So that, uh, that bodes well for those who are trading positive the dollar or against any of the other pairs because of that. The pound is the only one right now that is strong, stronger than the U.S. dollar So um, at this moment. It's the one that has the smallest uh, trend. And it's probably pretty flat. It's probably a short trade, but it's probably flat, flat on that. So the Aussie, the Aussie looks the weakest in the short term. Very nice. All right, um, let's go back here. Uh, looking at the intraday charts, uh, we're we're currently still range bound. The S and P 500. Looking at the uh, setups, um, look at the expansion of volume. That's what I love the gearbox for. The gearbox shows me the uh, expansion of volume and volatility in the market. So you can see a normal breathing of the market. Uh, is in this range, but now we're starting to see a huge expansion of both volume and volatility in this market. And so with that expansion, the uh, the speeds of the market need to adjust. Otherwise, if you're still trading on same time frames, then uh, you tend to be out of sync with what the market's really doing. And so you can leave some trades on the table. What the gearbox does is, is it is an optimized tool that looks at the breathing of the market and it, it changes the speed of the tick charts daily to help you to stay in sync or to be optimized with the current market conditions. So right now trading a 1306 for the fastest time frame, a 2612 for our our fast chart, our blue, a 5224 here for our third or our normal trading chart and the 10.448 for our slow chart. 10.448. Okay. From that, then we have an analysis where we can take our, our fast chart, which is our normal chart that we trade from, or our yellow chart. We can trade from either one of these charts and then uh, take that as a 1-2 confirmation or a 1-2, and we, the roadkill loaded on the third time frame becomes our confirmation all we're looking for is the volume on that roadkill. So one, two, three will give us a, a confirmation of a trend in that direction. I prefer to stick with the blue tick chart and uh, trade that as the market comes out. I have a 15 minute market trade rule. So as the market opens, a window is developed that shows me the first 15 minute range of the market. And I generally do not take a trade until I see a break of the top or bottom of that 15 minute range. And then the trade has to be confirmed uh, entry based upon the Hawkeye three step entry exit method. Once that's confirmed, then the trade's on and you manage the trade uh, just like we've always uh, managed trades either to fix profit target or using your Hawkeye level rules or take the trade and hold the trade as long as the trend is good and exit at the Hawkeye stop. So those are all techniques and tools which I've taught and I teach all the time. And if you are a member of Hawkeye, all of those are, are available 
in the members area. So if you go over to the Hawkeye Traders website, there, HawkeyeTraders.com, click on the members page, click and click log into the Hawkeye members area, or if you're a Tomahawk member, log into your Tomahawk page here. But uh, the same login works on either one. Then uh, once you're in the members site, go over to the resources page, click on resources. That's a sub menu here, but just click on the resources and it will show you the um, all of the resources available to you. Um, here's quick links to go through the mentoring training uh, to the Thursday members only training and to the Wednesday demo classes. Um, you have the downloads right here is your three step entry exit method. This teaching on six ways the market moves and these are the um, overheads that go along with the the teachings. If you are a starter package member, all of your volume teachings are contained right here. These are all these mentorings, the special mentoring webinars that we held. Um, and then uh, these Thursday training classes are here where I go through specific teachings on the tools and the um, market uh, teachings. Here is again an, an update and a review of the six ways that goes along with the other teachings as well. So and all of these I show the three-step entry exit methods especially on the ones which talk about entries and exits depending upon the market that we're in. And I, I spend a lot of time on trade entries and exits and so here you're managing a trade using three different exit methods. So here you've got all those uh, there. So these are all very good teachings to help you to learn the method to know how to trade with these tools on the live edge of the market with confidence and consistent profitability. So the, that's the whole idea behind Hawkeye is a, it's a tool set that gives you a definitive way to enter, manage, and exit your trades with confidence. Any questions then? So uh, right now, waiting, open crude oil. Crude oil looks very weak. Um, looks like we're trading down. We had a really nice signal right here and right here. It's coming right back up into resistance. So we're looking at the longer term downtrend 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 so uh, wait waiting for that to come back up so this one looks uh, relatively safe we've got two minutes per bar and uh, we're um, even with the uh, build back up into strength that short-term build is just simply corrective so we're still looking at this to continue down short so watch for the continuation signal to get back in to the short side volume is already starting to point and paint that picture for you but let's wait for that to see if it confirms. I don't see any other uh, signal for that to, to turn around at this moment. The other markets look like they're pretty much the same. I do have a setup here where I'm monitoring all of the futures instruments I like to keep an eye on. I've got the S&P, the NASDAQ, the YM, crude oil, gold, and the Russell all here on a page where I can see their relative setups. I've got all of my trade signals set up so that I can see these uh, in a quick glance to see whether I'm getting signals long, short, or otherwise. So it's a, it's a nice reference to have just on the side and to uh, refer to real quickly. So with the six monitor setup, it's easy to have that set as one. Monitor those so that way if I'm looking at something or doing some longer term analysis, I don't have to take my eye off of any of the ones that are particularly interested in. And of course, if you use um, alerts, um, you can always have the alerts set for that as well. Any other questions? Ron, good to see you. Is it okay now to upgrade to TradeStation 9.5 with Hawkeye? Yes, I'm currently using 9.5. I've been using it for a couple of months now, so it looks very stable and it's ready to go. I'm currently on update, let's see here, update 
21, and that's a, that's perfectly fine. So yes, it is. Wow, that pound, uh, that Canadian came out pretty strong, didn't it? Yeah, it was the, the fat man that was pointing me to the strength because we saw an extremely strong Canadian and extremely weak pound. The pound was starting to roll with strength and the Canadian was starting to roll with weakness prior to the news. Of course, the news came out. But uh, we already saw what direction we were looking at the market to go into. Short-term correction, big, big move. So you're not going to, this is difficult to trade and if you aren't on top of it. But yeah, it does give you the information. So that's going to give you a close. You can see the uh, trend dot, big, strong volume pushing that up in here. So that's not a 15, 30, 60 minute entry signal. It is a wide bar of course, we know traditionally that if you haven't already taken an intra-bar intra trade on this, that this wide bar prevents you from taking a trade now. So you can't take a trade on the pound Canadian. You have to wait for this because high probability that price will suck back into the body. So this is a high probability short-term reversal if you're looking to try to take some profits off of this then there's a high probability that that price will suck back to the middle of this wide bar. And that's why we can't take new trades based on that unless your strategy is to try to scalp trades off. But if you're looking for this as a trend trade, then you wait for this bar, price bar to stabilize. You're waiting three to five price bars to see where price will be following this bar. And as you can see, price is continuing to surge back up again. So if we get this continuation close above, then that will give us a nice strong signal to go and to continue long. Because it will close up and above this price bar range. So that's your your wide bar, your your, your wide bar rule. 15 minute is the minimum wide bar for that. Euro, yep, Euro US dollar. Where's that pair at? Uh, yep, the fat, the fat man and the analysis we did earlier is right on target. We're still starting to see strong uh, selling volume. Uh, continuation signals are getting, being pumped out and we get some really nice trade signal short on that euro 15 minute confirming confirmed with the 30 minute and of course we saw with a longer term already in place 60 minute trend which came out came back in again came out and then we have just come back into that trend again so a nice trend of weakness in that euro a trend of strength building in the dollar and then we can see also uh, that mirrored on the 30 minute so that's uh that does look good for the uh, the trade and for a continuation even longer term. Uh, it even looks good, so that's always good to see. So right now, intraday the Dow mm, we're choppy. Uh, you can see that the kiss is still uh, looks to be slightly bearish, but we're still within the first solid bar on the kiss, so that's that's very low and it's essentially flat, but we need to see this start to break up. We're very close to seeing that, but overall we're, we're extremely bullish on the open. Uh, not a lot of real activity on this, and you can see the fat boy it is correlated, but definitely bearish. So bearish, bearish in inclination. So bullishness in, the, in gold, uh, crude oil is strong, but doesn't show that on the chart. So we see a lot of strength in the, the crude oil, 
um, but the the pattern looks like we're we're expecting some downside move. So if you're looking at crude oil, you can see crude oil really it wasn't strong. Longer term, maybe let's pull that chart out and see. No, see, not a lot of strength there. We had short some a short term strength come in. That's probably what the we were seeing, but uh, it very quickly came back off again. So the uh, the the reversal signal and the sell off is still very strong and. We're watching for that to continue right now. Is anyone here for the very first time? Need to see some of the basics? You have a question with regards to Hawkeye and how to get a better understanding of Hawkeye? Are you completely overwhelmed and need me to dial it down just a little bit? Are you a seasoned veteran and you want me to go deeper? I do have quite a few seasoned veterans in here. <laughs> a lot of guys I haven't seen in quite a while. Hey, Ed. Good to see you back again. Hey, Michael. Matt's. Ralph, Richard, Steve, Sven. All right, very good. <laughs> Dennis. David, okay. Your first time here. All right, that's good. Um, I just want to hope I'm not overwhelming you, but uh, the basics of Halt uh, Hawkeye are all in the volume. So we are a volume company, so that's all we do is we look at volume relative to price action, and we've developed a suite of tools that help us to analyze that and to do that. Following a three-step entry exit method, which I showed earlier, was available to all members of Hawkeye. Right here. Uh, a short 40-minute uh, teaching that goes through that. Then uh, what it is is that we're looking for confluence of three time frames. I'm currently looking at a 3-minute, 6-minute, and 12-minute. That's three different time frames. They are harmonic time frames in that each one is divisible by the base time frame. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. 6 times 2 is 12, and so forth. So they're all integer multiples of each other. And um, those are the time frames that we've chosen to use. And what I do is I put the trend, volume, and heat map on a chart to tell me and give me an indication whether I want to take a trade long or short in that market. So let me give the, uh, here's a basic setup right here where you've got the uh, trend, the volume, and the heat map. When the trend, volume, and heat map align, for the very first time here you can see a green trend and it goes white indicating congestion. For the first time when it goes down into a red trend, Okay. Then you can see the volume, heat map, and trend dots have all aligned, and that gives you an entry signal at that point. Now, when that entry signal uh, goes and agrees with the secondary time frame, that at the exact same point, when we have volume and trend aligned, then the second time frame, we need to see that the volume and the heat map the momentum that's built in that second time frame is enough to confirm the direction of that trade. And then we use the third time frame volume. Volume is all the key across all the time frames. We use third time frame volume to confirm that there are selling pressure coming in already, even on the triple time frame, in order to confirm our entrance on the five time five minute time frame. So a five, fifteen, thirty. You're looking at uh, 3 times 5 is 15, 
2 times 15 is 30. 5 times 6 is 30. So you can see that it's the same type of integer relationship. It's not the same ratio, which is not as important. But the important part is that they're all integer multiples. So they're harmonic with each other. And then again, you've got a 60 minute time frame here. I love the 60 minute time frame because it gives me a, a really nice picture of where the market trend is for the day and what I'm looking at. Yeah, Paul, uh, he, Paul says, how about something to trade on the Forex or smaller time frames? I, I, I put that out earlier. I don't know if you were here earlier or not, but Sven has already uh, taken advantage of that on the uh, pound Canadian and uh, did quite well. So uh, we were looking at the euro US dollar analysis and we saw that it was good for a continuation. So those who are looking at that have already made some pretty good gains off of that this morning also. And right now the uh, the other markets uh, are still in kind of a, a, a sideways, I'm trying to make a decision if I wanna go anywhere market. Okay, so sometimes taking no trade is the best trade to take. Sitting on your hands, there's nothing wrong with that because you have a rule that you have to follow. The rule is, I'm not going to take a trade until my, my strategy setup is in place. Then you execute your trade. Otherwise, you're just gambling. So you take a trade based upon proven methodology. You exercise the trade with precision. Then you know you have a much higher probability for success. There are a lot of things against us right now on this trade. We've got a flat kiss. We've got uh, markets that really aren't in line with what we're doing. We don't have trend trade directions. So, you know, nothing right now is telling us that there's any really tr anything tradable at this time. As far as the Forex market is concerned, then we can go back over there. If you're like I said earlier, we were looking for the uh, continuation of that that euro weakness with some potential dollar strength. So looking at that longer term, 60 minute, looking still looking good. Now, if you're looking at the 515, then you are looking at a 45 minute. 45 minute gives a nice strong trend of US dollar, nice weak trend of Euro, but that Euro is starting to, to turn just a little bit. So the story of the day again was the setup with the pound Canadian uh, showing a real strong tendency of strength coming back with the pound and uh, a lot of weakness from that Canadian. Of course, the Canadian news just confirmed what we already had s suspicion of, and uh, that was a, a potentially falling Canadian. But we're seeing that volume has, is starting to show that the, uh, the bottom might be in on this uh, euro trend. We're starting to see volume price extension, okay, with opposing volume uh, coming in at this low and so watch for this uh, trend to either come to a, a screeching halt or to test this low range for now. If we do see that as a test, then we will all see a correction in this trend. And that correction will probably be to the low side of this channel. And I'll show you what that is. The low side of that channel is a 1.18115. So if we do see a correction on that dollar, euro dollar, then uh, that correction would be right about to that point. That's an aqua zone. So if you know the Hawkeye uh, zones, then the highest probability reversal trade is from an aqua zone. So once we see price toy and bounce off of that zone, that becomes the, uh, what we call a money bounce. That's the highest probability trade that we see. You take that trade and it's good for uh, 20, 30, 50 pips or more uh, based upon the chart setup. So um, it's a great uh, it's a great setup, a great trade setup. So we're always looking and watching for that. Um, other than that, Paul, um, there's don't know what else to say. Looking at the radar screen, you can see all the different pairs and different setups here. You can see that the pound New Zealand has just given an initial one trend dot signal on the 15 minute chart. So based upon the pound New Zealand, you can see the pound is strong against that New Zealand. So you can see that that has an initial long trade. So the 15 minute, you can see there's the initial trend dot with volume and heat map. 
Second time frame we have volume, but the heat map is not dark yet. So that's not a confirmed entry. But it is an initial trend entry. If you're trading a 5.15.30, then that is a confirmed entry. The five minute gave an initial signal entry right here with trend volume and heat map confirming. Did that confirm on the 15 minute? Well, let's turn our chart on to see. No, it did not because you can see volume is still red and the heat map is still red. So you need to be able to see where the first green volume and first heat map aligned and that occurred right here. Okay. Volume, trend and heat map first aligned at that point. So that gives you a trigger bar and an entry bar right there which shows confirmation that volume, trend, and momentum are all aligned. And you can see on the third time frame that volume had already come in three bars ago. So an hour and a half prior to that, you already saw building volume coming up. So this becomes then your trade entry point on this bar. If you're trading the five minute, 15 minute just gave an initial trigger, but that initial trigger bar right there, okay. Um, isn't confirmed until you see a dark and then there you just got the trigger bar so the second trend dot now gave us a confirmed entry point for the uh, longer time frame so that was uh, the volume trend and momentum have aligned uh, for a long on the pound New Zealand on that so looking at that that's what you're you're, you're looking for you're looking for those trends of continuation pound Aussie has three trend dots so if we were to look at that pound Aussie you can see there's one, two, three trend dots coming in, rising volume. You can see second and third time frame have confirmed already. So there's also an initial signals there. So th those give you really good setups. And as these trickle back down, here is a dollar Canadian with an initial green trend dot. This dollar Canadian is coming off a wide bar, so we cannot take that trade. Probably most of the Canadian ones are going to be coming off of wide bars. So you can't take trades off of wide bars. You have to wait three to five price bars following the wide bar in order to confirm the trend direction. Then once you see that uh, price bar uh, confirmed, then you tra take the trade resulting from that. So any of the Canadian pairs I'm going to kind of ignore for now. Um, here's a short Aussie yen. Got an initial trade signal short for that, one, two, three. So that's a confirmed signal short. So that looks like a good trade. Aussie is starting to roll and turn back over where all the Japanese yen is starting to roll back up. So that's also another good sign of a nice short-term trade. So this gave us an initial entry point. So there's a lot of things the Hawkeye tool set will help you to see, to look at on taking those trades. The setups are there. But taking the trade is just a matter of confirming the setup and e executing your, your trade. So did that help, Paul? I think I, I threw out about six or seven different uh, references there. The other markets uh, aren't looking so good. They're still uh, they're still correlated pretty nicely. Nasdaq's not really playing well. The others, uh, crude oil is looking uh, at some strength, but that's very weak. Uh, the gold is still kind of meandering right in, you know, fair price range. And so right now I would expect it to pretty much be trading sideways. Um, so if we were to look at it, you'd probably see about the same thing. Yeah, it's just not really, really doing anything. We're kind of on the low end. A retest of this would be pretty good. And then uh, potential bounce right back up to 1270. So we're working at uh, that as our trading range. So about a five to six point range, which is a good range for gold. NASDAQ, what's it doing? Looking like it's starting to, 
to B week. Yep, got a nice head and shoulders pattern starting there. Look at that neckline. We're just right at that break. We're coming right back down into our, our demand area. It's a pretty nice uh, volume bar breaking us out of that. So a pull back into that uh, would be a nice for continuation. But uh, it doesn't look like it's it's playing well with the others. And so this uh, the fat boy is showing us that that tends to be more weak than the other the other pairs, the YM, the ES, or the mid cap. They all tend to be pretty much just right right in that range. The kiss barely broke out of our our range, but have, has flattened out completely. So a flat kiss means sit on your hands. Sit on your hands. Just wait for a confirmed trend. You don't have to trade the noise. Wait for the trend. If you're a noise trader, then great. Trade the chop. Trade the noise. Wait for the top of the chop to enter short. Wait for the bottom of the chart to enter long because you're expecting it to stay in that range. But if you're a trend trader, just sit on your hands. Wait for the noise to go away because this will kill your account if you're trying to take a trade in a choppy situation like that. Just wait for the trend. The trend is your friend. Once the trend is established, you have a three time frame confirmation. You're not going to get the top and you're not going to get the bottom, but you are going to get the meat of the trend. And that is more than enough to satisfy your banker and your wife, if I might add. Oil inventories, five minus 5.6 million. Woo. That's a, a much, much lower rate. Wow. So continuing dwindling supplies means that we're going to have continuing increasing prices. So watching for crude oil. And you're watching for those crude oil so prices to continue to rise back up. So we've got a nice correction right now. These are attractive prices to buyers. So watch the volume. And at, when, once you start seeing buyers stepping into this market in response to that report, see right now there's no, there's really no news on that report. It just kind of flickered up. So that, that tells me a lot of people already knew. And that was really kind of what was expected. If there was that big of a move and it was expected, it was already priced in. But with if it was already priced in, why is the price going down? I don't I don't understand it. I just trade the charts. But based on the news, and if you see if you see the expectation is for minus three point two million and we get a minus five point six million, that's a much larger uh, drawdown. In the stockpile so that directly implies the prices are going to go up but with the strong dollar it might be counterintuitive so since the uh, crude oil is priced uh, on the US dollar the dollar is strengthening it might be holding it but wait and watch for the volume and the volume will be the key to giving you the signal for what what it's going to do and where it's going to go Right now, it's telling me it doesn't want to go up. So we might be retesting 56, 56. We might have a, a trap the retail trader push down. Okay. Back down to just below 56, about 56.50 here. 56.40. A big push down, and then you, you, if you you'll start to see huge amount of buyers stepping back in, trying to trap the breakout traders to the downside, and then they're going to pull back up really quickly. Watch for the upside target to be about 57.50. Yeah, this is definitely selling volume. It's a very weak bar, so that's very indicative of the trend going and continuing down.
but the inventory report says otherwise. So that's why I said watch the volume. The volume is going to tell you what it's going to do. Just be very, very careful. We have a lot of support built into it. I would be I would be looking for the uh, the volume to tell me what what I wanted to go from this. I'm not I wouldn't I would not take a short from this point. I would need to see the uh, the bottom side broken first if I were to take a short on this. See that? I I need to see a 56.33 broken if I'm going to short this trade. Otherwise, I'm looking for a correction and I'm looking to long to long this trade because this is a a, a nice a very nice demand zone. But I need to see the volume. So once the volume confirms the direction, then then it'll be a very nice trade. The uh, pound Canadian is continuing to do quite well. So Sven, good job. Glad you took the advice. The wide bar did have a nice pullback close to the mid range. And then after the fifth bar, you can see volume re-entered and we got a confirmed double dot entry signal to trade that. So even if you didn't hit the initial break, um, the more conservative entry signal right here still gave you a very nice entry point. And uh, following the uh, entry rules and the level rules, looks like you've already got a 3 to 1 risk reward ratio just by using standard entry rules on, on, on that. So even after the news, the pullback, following the rule set, everything that you did, you patiently waited you got uh, three to one reward. So risking three, risking uh, one level uh, to make three um, is a winner in, in my book. So, but it's all about patience. It's all about timing. It's all about following the rules that you have established. You don't want to follow other people. You want to follow your own rules. Once you establish a rule set that you know and can trust, then follow it. When I say double dot, what do I mean? Yeah, well, double dot is uh, showing you that the second and third time frame have met conditions that agree with your current fast time frame. We always trade from the fastest time frame chart, and the other two time frames are our confirmations. And so the roadkill indicator is a tool that helps us to see where the alignment occurs. Here we got one, here's a second one, here is a third alignment of where the entry so we can see the initial trade the weakness the resumption of trade you can see with the resumption of trade there's an acceleration then you can see the correction back to the trend dots and then the resumption of the trade and there's the third signal so usually that's about all you'll get in trend is about three signals So the first three are usually the best. The first one is the best. The second is good. The third one is okay. But uh, if you miss the initial trades, it's always a great way to uh, to see that. And the fat the fat man was what gave me the the setup because prior to this move, about ten o'clock here, this is six in the morning. You can see you have a pound Canadian setup on that you're looking for that that huge divergence on the fat man to show you um, but the potential for reversal and the direction of the trades that you're looking at and then this is the result good job Sven Sven says he had a very good day so far fat boy with different indicate indices for DAX trading as well awesome I love to hear that I, I've never traded the DAX. I don't even have data feed for it, but I know and I hear that it's an awesome uh, instrument to trade. L much like crude oil, it can rip your face off, but if you understand it, it's uh, it's extremely good. So thanks for sharing. I appreciate that.
Australian dollar, Japanese yen. It's still in the setup phase right now. It looks like you've got a volume bar on the 15 minute, which is showing that we're, this is going to be correcting. So watch out for that. We're still within, well, within our trade criteria. So um, always expect trades to uh, correct and pull back. We can see from the six ways of market moves that this is in a very strong downtrend. That if you just gotten in, you probably have gotten in late uh, because the uh, the entry signal was um, looks like it was given right back in here, just before uh, just roll just right at the open of the U.S. session. Uh, but uh, so you can you can expect to see some correction come back in. So the trend dots are continuing to drop. You can see price is starting to close above that trend dot. So this could simply be a pause, or we could be getting ready to go into congestion. And congestion can last for some time or not. But uh, the fat man is showing us that we are still looking at uh, weakness versus strength, and so that shows us a potential. For a down move but that's coming off of a strong move this could simply be rolling and getting ready to continue with strength and the yen likewise since it's coming from extreme range also could simply be rolling and then getting ready to go and continue back down again we refer to that pattern as a hook so the hook is usually the the first hook is usually a very strong trend indication so when you're when you see the trend come down, roll up and then resume on the fat man, then that's a good indication of of continuation of momentum in the trend of price. That's right, Philip. Crude oil is another one that will rip your face off if you're not careful. So you need to be very careful trading crude oil and always be aware of um, the market and uh, the news around you whenever you're trading that. Because um, it's been really tame late lately, but uh, it can become very violent very quickly. So please, uh, please trade it with caution. <laughs> See, when I say watch for volume, volume, volume tells you when the buyers are stepping in. So when price becomes attractive to buyers, then you watch for price to correct back up. But once it's not attractive any longer and the seller's stepping back in again because it becomes attractive to them, then the price will resume in the original direction. And once we see the original direction, price always tends to accelerate faster in the direction of the longer term trend. So... These are perfect placement points and great places to um, observe and to learn from that. You're looking at the uh, dollar Canadian. Yep, you. Um, let me see that dollar Canadian. Two trend dots. Dollar Canadian. You got you got a really nice sell signal. Right here, see volume price extension, opposing volume. So you have selling volume, you have a pivot high. So looking for three to five price bars uh, of continuation. So that's gonna correct back three to five price bars. So the price will fall and will correct back at least what we're looking for, three. We're on the third bar and we do see selling volume. So watch for that to correct. We did hit the overhead resistance. This is an aqua zone, so high probability that that's going to pull back and correct. And it looks like we could correct back down to prior resistance, which is about a 1272. So look for a potential correction back down to this, this range right here. Yeah, that's exactly right. A lot of traders look for that pivot, and it paints itself after the second bar. So once you do see that, you can see on the longer time frame, confirmed sellers. So this is really attractive to profit takers if, they've, if they're long 
and they've gotten this this much profit in a lot of people are going to be selling that off and, and taking their profits out so so that's a good eye and that's a good eye to be able to see that too so so good job well i'm way out of time today i've gone 20 minutes over but i'm glad i was able to answer your questions and give you some analysis on that so thank you for taking the time to uh, come in today for those of you who are just trying to get started I do have a special offer to make for you um, if you go over Hawkeye Traders website and if you enter this link right here let me pull that up I'll paste it here into the uh, chat area there's a link that will take you to this page and so let me open it up and put it in for you uh, HawkeyeTraders.com slash Wednesday WED It'll take you to a page that will give you a very special offer for those of you who want to get started with Hawkeye today so we're offering the Hawkeye volume starter package it's a tool that gives you the Hawkeye volume volume paint bar volume radar the pivots and the wide bar these are the most popular tools that we have if you're trading Hawkeye you trade with these tools it gives you a, a way to get these tools in your pocket to get access to our users area and to be able to use these and talk to other traders who are trading these same it also gives you access to our monthly members only mentorship training which happens to be tomorrow so those of you who are still here make sure you uh, sign up for and attend tomorrow's monthly mentorship class and uh, you also get a bonus two-hour on-demand training course on how specifically to use volume and don't forget to get your free copy of our book the volume secret um, all, all that comes instead of for $360 you get it for $97 so it's a one-time price to get going on that I know most, most of you have already taken advantage of that but for those of you who have not that's the best way to get started with Hawkeye and then from that um, we show you exactly how to take an integrate volume with your current methodology so if you go to the other charts um, say longer term volume then you can trade uh, these these charts using um, the uh, tools you already have like the MACD or if you've got relative strength or if you're looking at stochastics then whenever you get a signal like on a cross of a MACD or if you can see a, a strength uh, that's in your favor then you want to be able to see if volume is confirming the trade if volume is confirming the trade direction you have a lot more confidence to take that trade so once you learn how to understand volume and how volume is the only leading indicator and how it gives you an intent of where the market direction is going then you'll become a better trader and once you become a better trader then you'll probably see the value of the rest of the Hawkeye tools and how they all work together based on volume to give you high probability low risk trade entry points that are definitive that can be back tested and they can be automated uh, speaking of automated we do have a quick update on our automated strategies see the uh, the Kazakh ES1 has been doing phenomenally well uh, and uh, we uh, just got into another trade long right here so you can see the, uh, the current trade consistent so those of you who are in the uh, ES1 are currently sitting pretty and there were probably about since October just just over one two seven trades actually five six seven seventh trade uh, no losses yet on the ES1 oh sorry on the YM and the TY we have uh, the TY is a counter trade so you can see that it is a balanced portfolio where we're looking at the Dow Jones and the 10-year bond and the ES4 is a four strategy trade where we're looking at uh, taking trades on we have two trend strategies and we have two chop strategies so whenever the market is starting to go into a chop pattern 
then we look at trading those. But whenever the market, no, let me see, I'll, I'll expand this out. You can see that, see the chop? So you're looking at trading the chop only because trend, trends don't tr do well in chop. You have to have a, a strategy specifically for trading. And so trading the chop is, is a, a skill in and of itself. So we have two trend trade strategies and two chop strategies that are currently all automated and live. And that's part of the 35K account. And then we have the newest one is we call the LR series. The LR series is uh, is uh, trades which are covered by options. So we're looking at taking trades, we're holding them for a certain period of time, and we're covering those trades with option contracts so that we have very limited downside. And that's the LR in the series of limited risk. So we have limited risk and we're maximizing our reward potential. So the overall profit in the account is not going to be as good as you if you didn't have options, but you're guaranteeing that you're not going to be losing more than a certain amount and making sure that your, your um, t upside is still uncapped and unlimited. So we are currently in a long position right now. That long position has been covered by a 263 put. So right now we are exactly at break even. Any time price goes below 263, then we have a guaranteed exit price at 2630, guaranteed, regardless of where the price goes down. But any time if the price goes up and continues up, then we have a nice profit built in. So all of these are, are available on Striker. If you want, have, want more information on that, then just simply go to Hawkeye Traders website, hawkeyetraders.com, and you can see it right here on the front page in the news section, put your trading into automatic. So uh, click here for more details. We'll take you to the page, put your trading into automatic, and uh, here are the details of all four of our automated strategies, which are being hosted and posted, and all the trade results will be um, available and live on Striker. And they're all, uh, here are the equity curves for each of these um, on striker.com. So that's where you go to get uh, information on the results. The, the results, uh, as, as have been, these are all simulated results, of course, but the three-month trading record uh, will be available um, in January on Striker. So if you click on the link here, it will take you to Striker's website, and it will give you full disclosure of all the information on how you can get started with trading any of these um, uh, live strategies. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording at this point.